Hi there, my name is Gabriel and I'm here in a uh, beautiful meadow in Jasper National Park, Canada. And uh, in this video I wanted to talk about the concept of Earth's second sun. Now, uh, lots of us have been seeing various photos and videos of various, um, you know, uh, planetary objects rising uh, above the horizon in Antarctica and Japan and Hawaii and, and all sorts of speculation about um, you know, the possibility of another planet that's hiding at the, um, you know, below the South Pole and uh, uh, Nibiru on the other side of the sun or another sun that's uh, somehow being hidden from us. Um, I'm not going to talk uh, in those terms about some sort of uh, planet or sun that is, you know, visible uh, right nearby that is somehow being hidden from us. This video is about um, the research of Walter Cruttenden, who is an astrophysicist, um, and his website is binaryresearchinstitute.org, I believe. Um, but you can search around for Walter, Walter Cruttenden. I'll go ahead and put his uh, name in an annotation here on the video. And he is researching the possibility that indeed we do have a second sun. Um, we are part of a binary star system, but it is not uh, visible to us. Um, as is our primary sun. Um, it may very well be visible to the naked eye, but the concept is that it's a star that's a long, long ways away, and we have a massive uh, uh, orbit that takes us around that sun every roughly 24,000 years. Now, if that number sounds familiar to anyone, this uh, theory ties into the uh, precession of the equinoxes. And the precession of the equinoxes is not a New Age concept. It is a scientific fact. And the precession of the equinoxes is a uh, phenomenon in which the, uh, the Earth makes a... Um, okay, we're revolving around the sun, obviously. And uh, there's another cycle of uh, roughly 24, 24 to 26,000 years, all depending on some different factors. And uh, just to get a basic uh, idea of what, what it means, say you're at the Great Pyramids of Egypt and you're looking east towards the rising sun. The uh, constellation that the sun will rise into changes every 2,000 years roughly. So when we're talking about the age of Aquarius, uh, the age of Pisces, etc., it's about uh, uh, which um, constellation the sun is rising into um, and so this is a, a real phenomenon that that uh, the earth is making this this other orbit of sorts so that the stars in this in this sky are shifting um, uh, one degree every 72 years and so uh, that adds up to 25,920 years I think uh, something like that but that's assuming that it's a constant speed which it may very well not be. And this ties into Walter Cruttenden's uh, theory. So he's been researching the, the possibility that there's another star out there, and one proposal that he made was the star Sirius. Um, uh, but, you know, he certainly hasn't uh, proven that con uh, conclusively. He hasn't proven his theory conclusively whatsoever. Um, but just to give you an example of some evidence that leads in that direction. Uh, a number of years ago, NASA um, ran an experiment to try to determine how fast our solar system was moving through space. And so they sent a satellite up into space with some very fancy gyroscopes. Um, however long this took, they performed this, uh, this test. And when they got it back, the number was so astronomically high <laughs> that they determined that the gyros had malfunction and they scrapped the whole the whole thing. The number that they that they came up with apparently corresponded with uh, more or less what Walter Cruttenden was saying that we would uh, a speed that we would have to be moving at in order to um, be making this massive orbit around uh, another star. So that's that's the basic concept um, that uh, we go around this other star, but there are uh, as we get closer to it, then the star would become much more prominent in, in the sky because it isn't, it isn't like this, the, our orbit around the sun, which is roughly 
um, circular and equidistant, equal distance from the sun, wherever we are. Um, but it's this massive um, elliptical orbit in which we come very close to it at one point and then we go very far away from it. So presumably we, we would be very far away from it um, where we are at the present moment. Um, so feel free to look around some more. One other thing that I want to add is that uh, David Wilcock has gotten on the bandwagon of supporting this. And I tried to email him like a couple years ago or send him a message somehow, I forget how, um, telling him about this because he'd, in some talk of his, he'd said something that made it clear that he wasn't uh, familiar with this or else he didn't believe it one way or another. But in recent videos of his, then he's been uh, pushing this as well. So it's gaining some traction whatever your thoughts happen to be on David Wilcock. But Walter Cruttenden is a um, uh, legitimate astrophysicist, so you can search around for some of his videos or um, uh, check out his website um, if you're curious to learn some more about this. So uh, there you go. Thanks for watching. Take care.